everyone, it's Summer Rain from Plant One On Me, and welcome to the Q&A series of all things plants. Um, if you have any gardening questions, feel free to send them to me at Homestead Brooklyn on my Instagram. You could send them to me on Facebook or underneath the videos is actually the most probably efficient place that I actually get them all. But um, today's episode is going to be strictly on sweet potatoes. I have been getting a ton of questions about sweet potatoes and I'm going to butcher your name terribly, but Marchinzi, M-A-R-T-I-J-N-S-I. -I. I know you have a lot of um, questions that come through on Instagram. Um, sorry if I butchered your name, but you said, I bought two sweet potatoes and I have no clue which side is up. What do I do? So this question is spurred. If you follow me on Instagram at Homestead Brooklyn, you'll you'll notice that I was posting a lot of um, sweet potato pics of this kind of sweet potato where it has roots growing in the bottom and it has all these beautiful leaves growing on top. And I recently just planted two of the slips in my community garden plot, which is very exciting. And sweet potatoes are um, a, a pretty amazing because you could eat the greens as well as the tubers. So if your sweet potato is getting a little leafy, you could actually cut off some of the leaves, not all of them. Otherwise, they won't be able to um, do any of their photosynthesis but you could cut off some of the leaves and you could saute them up, sort of like a spinach. And uh, I don't think they're as good as spinach, but if you push comes to shove, or if you want a little bit more diversity within your, uh, what you eat on a daily basis, then you could actually do that. And they do become pretty prolific. So I started getting a lot of these questions. Um, I, I'm sending some slips to people, but it's really not cost effective. I just sent, a couple slips over to I think Entropy Girl, I think that's your um, name on Instagram, and it was like a little over $13 to send them. So much more cost effective if you could find a, a sweet potato or in these cases purple sweet potato in your farmer's market or your neighborhood because this is really easy to do. So let me take you through how to actually propagate a sweet potato from the actual sweet potato all the way to the slips, which you could then plant, case in point. So, um, potatoes and regular fruit. You may see that in the supermarkets they are a little waxy, um, and oftentimes supermarkets will spray something on the potatoes, sweet potatoes, even lemons, all these type of things. So they, they don't like go bad or they don't like sprout um, slips or ears. In the case of um, sweet potatoes, there's it's very rare to find purple sweet potatoes, even in New York where a lot of these things are cultivated, but the farmer's market, I could sometimes find them, and they're only kind of like in season for a little bit because people love them, and they're like super sweet, and they're incredibly delicious, and I just wanted to try some of my own because they're not easy to find. Um, so Here's a sweet potato, purple sweet potato. And I am just gonna call you Martinji. I have no idea if that's that your name, that's your name. You are asking what side is up and down? Well, the reality is you probably don't know because there's no slips forming on this one. Actually, I'm lying. There's like a little tiny one I think that's starting up on top that you probably can't see but you really don't know which is up or down and you don't wanna just stick this in the water um, because if you do, it will rot. However, um, your sweet potato will eventually give you slip. So if you could see this, hope you can. I'm just, um, this is um, a farmer's market potato. Again, I did not pick this up at the supermarket because at the supermarket, that waxy stuff and the spray that they put on it typically would inhibit this type of growth. So get them at the farmer's market if you can. And then you'll start to see these little slips and you'll notice that they're forming primarily up here rather than down here. 
So what this means is that this is the top of the potato. This is perfect. And I, by the way, I, I wanted to do this tutorial for a while, but I couldn't do it because I didn't have something and um, I didn't have a sweet potato. I didn't have this one with slips and all in the, you know, the row of how it would go into from sweet potato all the way to the, the actual slip that you could plant. So once you have this potato, I would get a water glass. So this was an old glass from a hyacinth bulb. People have asked me where I've actually gotten this. Uh, you could probably find these glasses with some high with a hyacinth bulb in it. Uh, usually the bulb is up here and the roots go down and they're usually like three bucks with the hyacinth bulb so it's like absolutely very little money at all and I think they're perfect for sweet potatoes. So if I was done with this one, which by the way these things could give you slips for years. So this one could be a pretty prolific grower. And again, the whole goal is to actually get some slips so you can grow your own purple sweet potatoes from your, your kitchen scraps. So when you start to see ears, or if you start to see ears on potatoes, or eyes on potatoes, and slips on sweet potatoes, um, which by the way are not in the same genus at all, uh, sweet potato is not a real true potato. Anyway, so if you if you see this and on your, you don't throw it in the compost, you could actually grow um, plants from this little tuber. So then you would stick this in. Let's just pretend that this potato is this potato and you just stick it in like this and have the butt or the base of this sweet potato in the water. So that's exactly what we did here. This is the butt of a sweet potato. This side was up as you could see because most of the greens are coming up from here. So if you if you put it in the opposite direction you would probably smother or kill it. So the roots start to grow pretty vigorously, pretty quickly. And as a result, you have all of these beautiful greens, as you can see here. Now, once the green gets around three to four inches, and mind you, this one's way more than three to four inches, you can either rip it off or get a nice clean knife and slice it off. And as a matter of fact, I'm just gonna pull this one off. So I'm gonna wiggle it a little bit. Um, and if I need a little extra help, I could get the knife, but it's almost like pulling out a large hair follicle. So let me see if I could do this. Actually, I might just need a little knife. So I'm just gonna make a little incision in it like that. And it has like a little piece that came off here. And then I would usually just take off the lower leaves. And I am going to put this into water. So, I just want to give you a close-up of that sweet potato so you can see it growing and the roots and all that other kind of stuff. Then I have a second glass and once I pull this slip out, it doesn't have its own roots, but it will get its own roots, similar to this. So what you want to do is actually put this in water and it'll eventually look like that. So, you know, give or take probably a week. I mean, these things are extremely vigorous growers and I change the water probably once every three days. I like to get a new oxygenated water and I put them in a south facing window. So that means a lot of light. And once you give it a lot of light, that's, you know, perfect. It's what it needs. So after this, um, these slips kind of grow a substantial root base system, this is, I would say that this is pretty substantial. I mean, if you ever propagated plants before, you would be like, okay, I could plant this now. Um, you could plant it right in the soil. If you don't wanna shock it so much, meaning shocking it, like taking it from a water system all the way to a soil system, I would say you could do a mix of um, peat and perlite and give it a lot of water and like kind of really soak um, the soil and then you could transplant it into your raised garden bed or, or any of your containers maybe you do a container garden on your balcony and if you plant them make sure I mean obviously it's a tuber it goes pretty far down into the soil so if I, I would say if it has 12 inches of soil you're you're pretty you're pretty good and if you have a little bit more than that that's great as well um, it depends on when you want to harvest them. And I think it's about, you know, four months until harvest, I would say. It might be a little bit more. I haven't ever grown purple sweet potatoes um, before. This is my 
first year, but for potatoes in general, which again are not the same, uh, it's about three to four months. So anyway, I hope that is super helpful for all of you who had questions. Um, for those of you who do want purple sweet potato slips who can't find them, um, I am making some trips to the post office. It's a little over 13 bucks, um, probably closer to 14. So if you want me to send them, you could message me. I don't know if, how many I'll have. I think I might be giving rid of, get rid of, getting rid of all my slips with the requests that I've already had. But I don't know, hopefully this is helpful to you. I hope you enjoy some good eating because purple sweet potatoes are one of my favorite foods. And I have plenty of recipes that I've been doing with them on my other blog, sugardetox.me, which is helping people reduce their sugar intake. So you could check out some stuff there if that's interesting to you. And keep on sending your questions. They're all really amazing. And I hope I'm answering uh, most of them to your satisfaction. So uh, if, you, if you wanna tune in to, to more ways and kind of grow your kitchen, um, tune in every week on Thursday, no fail, 7 a.m. And check out the blog, Homestead Brooklyn, and my Instagram, Homestead Brooklyn. Bye!